well. Good morning. As you may hear and see, we're over in London, my hometown. So, we're in East London. We've decided to jump on Walthamstow Reservoirs. We're on the lower Maynard, and I've been seeing fish while appearing over the gate. I've seen a couple in the first swim, so I just want to get all my gear sorted. I'm itching to get the rods out. Let's get this barrel loaded, and I'll see you in the swim. Uh, well, I've jumped into the swim that I wanted to get in, but there's two lads uh, next swim down. They fish it, they're going to be fishing over it, so I'm just going to leave them to it. There is fish, there is a fish out there. I'm not too sure if it's a bream or a carp. I still haven't got a clue. If you, the, sh the cameraman will show you, it's really weird. It looks more like a bream, but it looks like a really, really big bream. So I'm going to go for do another lap, try to find some fish elsewhere. And if I don't find anything, carry on walking until I find some fish. Excuse me. No. See you later. Bye bye, Sam, mate. See you later, yeah? See you later, Larry. See you later, Donald. So, for the type of fishing I do up in London, getting on the trains and all sorts, I always got to uh, pack my stuff like I don't want to be taking loads of stuff. So I usually have all my rods set up on helicopters as I, I, I don't want to be carrying loads of different leads and different type of setups. The helicopter setup ensures me that I can just flick a rod out, just change the bead for whatever, whatever bottom I'm on. Either if I'm on gravel, I can just put it very low down. Or if I'm in weed, I can put it uh, high up. Um, so it's pretty simple, always using a helicopter setup everywhere I go, unless I know the lake. Uh, um, campaigning or, or sorts of stuff like that. So I've, I've got a different setup insured. Oh, oh, I'm in. uh, oh, we've been here for about an hour. We've seen three shows already. We couldn't have got off to a better start at all. Just getting in through the weed at the minute. I'm buzzing. So happy that we've got a bite this early on. So happy. This, ha this couldn't have been on out for more than 30 minutes. <laughs> I can't wait to see that on bike cam. Jesus. Jesus Christ, power. It's just in the weed here. Hopefully the, the lead has dropped off. Jesus. These resi carp do give a scrap. They do give half a scrap, I tell ya. Got a lot of weed. Don't know where the fish is. I'm just gonna have to go in there. Oh, he's in there. Oh. He's definitely in there. Oh mate, he's a big one. Oh my god, he's a big one fitting net. Come on, yes! He's in there, bro, my kid's in! Mate, he looks a big fish. I can't really see him, but his, his paddle's about this big. <laughs> what a I'm going to have to get in the water for this. Definitely an original, definitely. Oh, oh yeah, check him out. Woohoo! 
Mate, that's... I think that's one peck. Oh my God, I think it is, hold on. It's f***ing one peck! <laughs> oh! Gosh. That's one off the f***ing A-list. Sorry for my swearing. It's the one, oh. Just get in there. Look at it. Oh. Well, I can't actually believe what's just happened. So, I was gonna sit down and talk, talk to you guys about what my plans are about the next couple of days and nights, what we're gonna do. As I was tucking into my toasty, I've had, I've had an absolute savage, savage, savage take. Rod's gone flying in. And it's resulted with one of the oldest fish in the pond. One peck. Av oh, hold on, girl. You all right? Have a look at her. Woo! One of the oldest in the resi. 27 pound, I think it was. 26, 27 pound. Wait, she spawned out. I don't care what the weight is. Just check her out. Unbelievable. What a way to start off. An hour in and we've got one of the oldest fish in the lake. Mighty one peck. Woo! Have a look. <laughs> Unbelievable carp. Spin around for you guys. But you can look how old she looks. She just looks incredible. One I dearly wanted to catch as well. Amazing. Well, here's the other side of one peck, the side that's got a peck actually. <laughs> oh, I honestly can't believe I've caught this one first cast. Seen one show, 30 minutes later, off she popped. Well, <laughs> Wolverhampton Reservoirs in East London, fishing the Lower Maynard. It's about 19 acres in size, and this this type of water is something I love. It's my type of fishing where I travel light, uh, get on the trains with three rods, a net and a sling. But luckily today the cameraman's come and picked me up, so I've, I've managed to sneak into his van. But yeah, what we're, we're what we're trying to do here is just look for the fish. Just fish for a bite at a time, like we did this morning, found the fish, caught them within about 45 minutes. And yeah, just to show you what my type of angling is around London. We got her about nine o'clock, had a look, uh, look in a few swims and I didn't see much. And then I got to a swim called the Red Boy and then I was like to, to Scott, the cameraman. I heard one down there, down at the, the bottom of the resi. Um, so yeah. We got into here, as I set one rod up, <laughs> about a mid 20 pound mirror's come out. As I'm setting the second one up, a common's come, in, uh, come out close. And then the third, the third show, I put the middle one on it and that's the one that found a bite within about 45 minutes. And it was the one and only one peck as well. So one of the ones I really wanted to catch, you could probably just tell by my smile, I'm absolutely buzzing and yeah, we're on the uh, front of the southwesterly. We're going to see what, what brings in the next hour and a half. If I don't see nothing in the show, I'm just going to pack my stuff up, load it on the barrow and go for a walk around, see if I can try to find an opportunity elsewhere. But for now, I think we're going to put the, tea on, uh, the kettle on and have a tea.
So, pack up time. We've given it another hour. They ain't here. They've definitely moved off. So, get the rods in. And let's go try and hunt them down. So I totally understand why people do long sessions, sitting in a bivvy, waiting for bite time to come, relaxing. But on the other hand, I'm, I'm totally different. I like to be active, be on my toes, looking for fish, hunting them down basically. So I just know when I set up on a fish, I have an instinct that my bite alarm is gonna absolutely scream off and it's just that type of buzz I like to get. I like working for my fish and it just keeps me more active. I ain't got a lot of time to sit on a bivvy uh, for about 48 hours or, or a night. So I'm just trying to make the most of my time, try to catch as many fish as I can in my time that I have got. It's a lot of work, but I love it. It's, it just keeps me motivated to do, do it again if I do blank. And then at the end of the day, I will have a reward at some point. It might be straight away, or it might be in a month's time, you never know. I didn't think I'd end up on the two and three, but here I am. I've had a lap around the lower Maynard again. Didn't see nothing. It's, I feel like it's just shut up shop since I've had that bite this morning. Loads of people on the lake, no one's catching. So I decided to have a walk around the river. Didn't find anything, but I'm definitely gonna bait that up later for tomorrow, because I'm definitely gonna give it a good bash. Just walk around with one rod, do a bit of stalky, stalky business. But yeah, I'm on the two and three. Well, my luck is crazy at the minute, so I might as well ride it. Big common is well overdue, well, well overdue. So, never know. I might have a little go, try to find an opportunity for a bite and see what happens. I'm not sure if I'm gonna catch any more on the resis today. I'll give it my best shot, but let's see what happens, eh? So, we're back at the van. We didn't have uh, no joy at the last spot we just did. So what we're going to do is get the car loaded, take a bucket of bait. We're going to go up the copper mill on the lower main hard side and we're going to fill it in with a bit of particle just so we have a little chance in the morning. They might be on it, they might not. It's a, it's a take or risk. And we're going to give some bait on the lower main hard just so we have two different options. But let's get the gear in the van, go put some bait in and go get some grub because we've walked about 15,000 steps today and we're both shattered and our belly's hungry. You smell like carp. I think you're the successful day. Let's see what tonight brings, eh? Park Lake up in North London. It's they're filled with some lovely old little carp. They ain't uh, the biggest, they go up to about 27. But to be honest, I just want to get the rods out and just just go to bed. I'm absolutely shattered. We've got an early start tomorrow. We're going back up to Orvamstow. We're awake about five, leaving at six, getting there on the gate. Let's just get all these rods clipped up, get some bait on them, and hopefully we have some during the night. I was so hopeful of catching one last night. It ain't the uh, hardest of waters, so I thought I was going to get at least one during the night. 
We've turned up uh, last night, I think, right? We got the rods out by nine and then got to bed by about 10. All the fish that I heard last night, they weren't, they weren't on this side of the lake, they were more to the right, so that could be the reason why I caught. Plus the crayfish were destroying me all night. I had to redo my rods uh, twice because there was just no hook baits left. There, I've even had a few fizzers come up this morning, so I've even gave an extra an hour to try and nick a bite, but that's not happened. I should be at the stove uh, gate right now, waiting for it to open. So what we're going to do is pack up, get all this gear loaded, and jump in a van and head to the stove. Hopefully we can nab one. It's going to make me work even more now to try and catch one. So hopefully we can nick one. So we're back on the lower Maynard and we've decided to start on the, the same swim where uh, I caught one pick yesterday. Last night, this side of the lake got really busy, so I tried hiding away and put some bait in. It'd be silly for me not to drop in on that bait for a couple of hours this morning. I've looked everywhere, there's not been no show, so I might as well just drop in on the bait. Gonna stick, uh, stick out a little single or a little bag, give it a couple of hours and hopefully um, see if I can nab one. I've also checked the river spots that I baited yesterday bait's not being touched one bit so there's no point even giving it a go so we'll stick on the lower tonight uh, today and see if we can catch one more it'd be really good if we could as for rigs i keep it very very simple i'll only ever use two different types of rigs i'll either use a blowback or a stiff hinge the blowback will be either fishing on gravel clay clean silt you know what I'm, I'm talking about. And a stiff end is if I'm fishing on shows or a very, very weedy lake. Be confident in your own rigs. Just make sure the, the length of the rig is right, uh, right in the situation that you're fishing in and make sure you're hook sharp. That's the most two important things I could tell you about rigs. Other than that, just don't change your rigs. You'll, you, you'll catch fish any rig you'll use. Just make sure you're confident in it and I'm sure you'll hook them. Well, it's been a frustrating day today. I've barely seen no shows, completely different weather to yesterday. The weather doesn't have a clue what it's doing. It's properly bamboozled. I've had a bream at the start of the, the session, big, massive one. And I think that was a fish just there in the edge. But yeah, I had a bream, I had a load of coots come over my spot and they started diving at me. So I know the bait's uh, still there. So I've just so I've decided to leave. Went for a, ronda, a wander around and left the cameraman with the, gear, uh, with the fishing gear. And I did see one at this, um, just next to Machinery 2's, if you know the complex. And some, someone's jumped in there, so fair play to them, they must have seen it too. Right now I'm next to the sluice, where I have seen one show about 80 yards out. I'm not too sure if it was a carp or a bream, I've just, I've just seen a little, little roll. So I've put a rod on it see what happens but i'm really frustrated man because it's, it's just completely different to yesterday yesterday i got on a great start and at the minute it's not that it's looking the best so hopefully we can try and nick one we've got how long we've got six hours of fishing left let's see what happens Guess what? I've moved again. I finally managed to get on some proper fish. They've been showing like crazy out here. Every five minutes you see one go. I've put three rods out on them. 
I've got literally 40 minutes of angling left before the gate shut. Fingers crossed, they're definitely out of there. Let's try and make this a positive ending. Come on. Good morning, it's about 5.30 in the morning. And the last time you saw me was over Ormsa on the Lower Maynard. And that was, it was about an hour left of the day and there was about hundreds of fish topping up in front of me. But yeah, I didn't manage to have nothing. That's fishing for you on there. It's not the easiest of lakes at all. So I decided to nick in on a quick park and see if I can manage one last fish. And I did, it's not the biggest and it's not the prettiest, but you'll certainly do. So that brings us to the end of this trip. I hope you've enjoyed viewing my insights to my fishing. And yeah, I hope you like get out there and carry on bagging a few fish. Catch you next time. <laughs>